and may actually go into Hulk mode. Um, it does look like, though, we are about to start 9 out of Ben versus Kirill in that team win it in 256 July free-for-all winners bracket round 2 match. Now, it does look like Kirill gets to choose to go first and does win that coin toss. It says, good luck, have fun. What a fantastic sport. Now, we do see Ben here promoting the Hoopa. It does look like Ben is playing in Malmar, whereas Kirill, we don't know what Kirill's playing here, but we're going to find out here in just a moment as the flip comes. So it does look like it is some kind of a Zorark variant. Now, this could be Zorark, Glissopod, Zorark, Garbodor, or just Quad Zorark. There are a few other options as well, Zorark, Lycanroc, um, but for the most part, the, the first three are the ones we've seen. Now, we do see that Tapu Lele with the Wonder Tag coming down, which means most likely a Bridget to get the setup going. Um... There is the Bridget. So now we'll now we'll get a little more insight into what kind of a Zorark deck this is with this Bridget, what Pokemon are picked off of it. And uh, this will also tell Ben, you know, kind of what he's looking at. So it is Zorark Galissapod. We were playing this earlier today. And we do just see the pass come out, the Inke come down. Looks like Ben is going to Mysterious Treasure here. Maybe grab himself a uh, an Inke as well. Um, you know, he has the Tapu Lele if he wanted to Bridget. Um, but now he may just op be opting to instead grab a supporter for next turn. Looks like he is going to go with the Ultra to Crosma here. It says I value that over the Inke. And uh, play Tapu Lele. But now, you, you know, he's looking at it. He's wondering, man, maybe that was a mistake. I could bridge it here, but then I would have a supporter next turn. And we do see the Bridget go back. He is going to opt to just Cynthia here and hope to hit an Inke. We see him shake his head. You know he's thinking, man, that may have been in his play not grabbing that Inke this turn because now I'm in a situation where I potentially only have one Malmar next turn. And there's the Ultra Necrozma off of that Cynthia, which means that had he picked the Inke, he would have still had an Ultra Necrozma. You've got you've to gotta hate that. that. That has to be incredibly frustrating. But... Uh, and, and man, look at the expressions on Ben's face. It's hard to tell if he's frustrated or, or what the situation is, or maybe he's just excited. I don't know. But we are going back into Kirill's turn here with the draw, and we're just going to have to wait and see. It does look like the, right into Galissapod. No hesitation there. Um, sometimes players do wait to see if they can actually get the Wimpod going. And we do see the Tech Mewtwo come down, which is incredibly strong in this matchup. Does manage to deal with uh, things like Koopa very well with three energy to hit it for weakness. Now, we do see that Ultra Ball there for the Zorark. This is going to put one of the trades online for Kirill to allow, searching for two cards every turn off of a discard. But the Sycamore is going to come down first for that draw. Ops not to play the end. Paint Cans has joined Ben's Phantom Knight Nation as well, which is fantastic. Way to be a fantastic supporter of his community there. Now, we see the Sycamore come down, and the Zorark is going to be played on the Zerua. Um, so now there are two trade options available every turn. That's an additional four cards. We see the float stone in the active. Does the grass energy or the uh, possible, I guess they could run like a uh, a unit energy. It does have the grass. There is the first impression. Putting the 120 down on Hoopa. Interesting play here. Uh, Azul GG also, wow, fantastic team winning a member right there with that host. 12 viewers. Whew, that's a sizable one. But... Uh, the Galissapod does come down. Do the 120. That's an interesting play. We see Ben here. Doesn't really draw into much. Slaps the energy down. Plays that Cynthia. Still doesn't hit a Malmar or another Inke. Gets that Float Stone. But what do you really do here? You can uh, you can bring the Ultra to Cross up and do 100. But that doesn't really serve any purpose for you. Now we do see here that Ben runs the Altar of the Moon. That interesting tech card. Now we got Pokey GX Puller now hosting the stream with one viewer. Thank you, Pokey GX Puller. And, uh, yeah, it, it's an interesting play. I, I like the 100 damage here. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. My, my big worry here is actually um, that there's still no Malmar. If something happens to this Ultra Necrozma, we're not going to have a lot coming out of Ben's side of the field. Whereas Kirill's got, you know, four trades and the draw every turn. That's an additional five cards. They're going to be able to find pretty much everything they want in this matchup. They're going to have another Zorark online soon. They can start finding Acerolas and chaining the damage off the board. And uh, just keeping down a, just a major damage output. Now, there is that Acerola coming right out of hand. And it's going to pick that Galissapod right back up. Probably drop the Wimpod on the bench. Promote the Zorark and put a DCE down. And we're going to see that 120 Riotus beating come out on the Ultra Necrozma. This is not where you want to be if you're Ben. Absolutely not. And uh, Ben draws another supporter. Is going to play that Ultra... Um, Altar of the Moon. Slap that Psychic down and opt to end. Chooses not to use the Beast Energy now. And we do see here Ben draws into a Dawnwings, another Inke. So he does have the Inke online, as well as a Choice Band and a Beast Ring. A supporter for next turn in Guzmo or Sycamore, whichever he decides to use is fine. The question really comes down, do you Photon Geyser again? Do you choose to do another 100 damage, maybe 130 if you're going to play the Choice Band? Or do you just 
keep keep the energy here i think you have to photon geyser i think you're going to get knocked out this turn you, you can't really waste the energy retreating and so he does the hundred here unfortunately though for him he is going to lose this ultra necrozma we do see you know now with three trades online there is going to be access to seven additional cards each turn one with the draw and six with the trades so Kirill is going to pretty much have everything they want. Now, we do see the energy and the Glissapod come down with a Float Stone. Is there going to be an Acerola? It doesn't look like it. There is a Cynthia, so there is no additional Acerola. You do see Ben popping off there with that Fist Pump. One of that Zorark to stay online will be able to Guzma with the Beast Ring. Um, my only question is here, he doesn't have another energy. He's going to need an energy top deck to actually pull this off. He can knock it out now with a Tapu Lele, however. Uh, with that choice ban, you did see there that he saved that, uh, well, actually, you can't be string to a top of Lily, so I'm not quite sure how he plans to do this. Um, we, we see the B string, is he going to, he is going to Sycamore, okay, so he's not going to play that. Now, McPurple1213 is joined the Phantom Knight Nation, what a generous guy. Woo, Ben's giving him the old, the old razzle-dazzle. And uh, we do see the Inke getting ready maybe to come down on the bench. We see the, the Necrozma fully powered up. That will give Ben access to that GX attack, Moon Eclipse, which does 180 damage, 210 with the Choice Band, giving him the Glissopod knockout, and it cannot be hit the next turn for damage. Um, which, this is, this is a fantastic board swing on Ben's behalf. He is going to Moon Eclipse. You can see that he saw this line of play from a mile away, and that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted the Glissopod to come up. Now we see another Ultra Necrozma Field Blower off the prizes, and you've got to wonder from Curio, what do you promote here? You just put up one of the Zoraks with the Float Stones, obviously, but what's going to be your main attacker? Can you get that Zorark with 100 off the board, or do you put yourself in a situation where Guzma is going to wreck you next turn? It's, uh, it's interesting. Oh, what's up, Nico? Sorry, sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm commentating, so I, I get pretty into it. But, uh... So it looks like here we uh we we are gonna see that max potion come out on that Zorak. Does want to revert the damage now, get rid of that DC, is gonna opt to Guzma here. Now, do you select an Inke or do you take that Hoopa? It looks like he is gonna take an Inke. Uh bring up that Zorak, drop the DC, and slap that parallel down. So now Ben's gonna have to pick what he wants to get rid of. And you it looks like you just get the Hoopa and the Lele. You take that 120 damage off the board, take away that prize. Um Ben maybe just committing to not having Malmar this game, but I think he makes the right play there. You know, he didn't want to get rid of the Float Stone, but you absolutely have to keep your Inkes online. So he does get rid of the Hoopa with the damage and the Tapu Lele and sets himself up in a, in a decent board state that even when this Inke gets taken down, he is still going to be able to get Malmars online. Um, now we do see here that Kirio may maybe just be thinking through a few additional plays, maybe deciding if they want to make another trade. They do only have 14 cards left in deck, uh, but they will go down to three prizes this turn, taking out this Inke. Now, in addition... The one thing we do have to remember is that there is always the potential for that Guzma knockout now on this Dawnwings Necrozma that is weak to dark. Um, right now, with just the amount of Pokemon on the board, that Dawnwings is susceptible to being knocked out by that Riotous Beating, which could mean two prizes and leave Ben with a lone Inke. Um, he can't really afford to lose these three energy yet until he finds a way into either another V-String or a way to power up another Dawnwings in hand. Puka and Sean for Worlds Commentators 2019. I'd love to work with Kyle. It'd be fun. Um, yes, Dawn Wings is that easy, juicy two prize KO. Um, ben opting to maybe say something, choosing not to, says, uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. And uh, that's probably the correct choice. Just just let them take their time. They're, they're just thinking. Maybe just didn't realize they hadn't taken the prizes yet. Maybe just a little nervous. You know, you're, you're playing a big name in the community, not just on the Twitch side, but in the team winning inside as well. Could just make somebody nervous. Now, Ben here, uh, getting a little bit frustrated, you could tell, but he's okay. He's just thinking through his plays now. Has that alternate Crossman GX. Is going to possibly grab it here, opting maybe not to take a Malmar. So he does drop it, says, I'm going to need to find my way into a B-string here and get this going. Is going to field blower away that Parallel City and one of the Float Stones on the active Zorark. Now, the question is, will we see this Dawnwings come down? He's not sure. That's an additional Dark Weakness Pokemon. Not sure if he wants to put this down. 
But at the same time, it doesn't really change anything from just knocking out a Malmar. Now, he is going to have to Sycamore away a Tapu Lele into Guzma, which will put him on the back foot. But he does find the Beast Ring, but absolutely does not find any energy. But he has the Malmar with the Mysterious Treasure. He can fully set up. You see the double thumbs up. Ben is in the position to make a huge play here. He's got that Malmar on board and the Altar of the Moon, so he's not even going to have to get rid of the energy on the Necrozma. The question is, does he have the Psychic Energy in the discard to get this Necrozma going to one-shot this Zora Arc here? He's it's gonna need three psychic energy to do it um and that should even through resistance well actually it doesn't have resistance he's fine he's fine three psychic energy will do it that'll be 260 damage to the sorark he is gonna do the double b string here drops the drops the two malmar down now the question is do you play the altar of the moon here do you risk the retreat um and, and be able to the the parallel city over it next turn. It looks like he is going to psychic recharge now. Double psychic recharge on that ultra to Krasma has just enough energy to get this going. The three energy attack to do exactly what he needs to do. Two hundred and sixty damage is considering the moon. Decides. Mm, I'm not sure. He's thinking about it. He's he's thinking. Do I save these energy here? I don't think you do. I think you take the retreat and you can just psychic return them next turn. Looks like he is going to, though. Does retreat into this Ultra to Krasma and Photon Geysers for 260 damage. What an absolute swing play there by Ben. Goes down to two prizes. Now, we've seen Kirill here at three prizes, though. The game is absolutely not over. There is still the potential for that Guzma play on the uh, Dawnwings to Krasma. You can see Ben popping off there. They're absolutely excited that he... Uh, he was able to pull that off. Now, we do see the puzzle of time here come down. Is this going to stack the net? Oh, it is a double puzzle. So, we are going to see two cards pulled from the discard. I suspect we will see a Guzma and a DC here. Um, okay, a parallel city and a DC. Opposite overlay that stadium says, I don't want you to be able to free retreat. That does maybe potentially mean that uh, this Ultra... Ne Ooh, yeah, Ben's in a rocky spot here because this Ultra Necrozma gets locked out. What's he going to promote to retreat this, uh, to, to be able to retreat one of these Malmars so he can get another Ultra Necrozma next turn? Looks like we do see a trade of an Evo set of here from Curio. Maybe looking to grab the, uh, grab the Guzma. There may already be one in hand. We see the Wimpod come down, which will be enough damage to knock out this, uh, this Dawnwings. With a, with a Riot of Speeding, it will do 100 damage through that weakness. So it, it really comes down to, is the Guzma alive? Does Kirio have the Guzma? We do see another trade. Ben once again getting excited. And uh, there's nine cards left in Kirio's deck. You, you've got to wonder, is it there? Oh, the counter catcher! Runs counter catcher! You can tell Ben did not expect that. Head in his knees right there. The counter catcher and the delinquent back to back. Ops out after Guzma. Ben hasn't even seen the delinquent yet. Doesn't even realize he's going to have to discard three cards, which is going to leave him with a lone sycamore, you'd have to suspect. And he's going to lose his Dawn Wings here. He's going to go down one to two in prizes, have a lone sycamore, and have no way to retreat. He's going to have to hit the float stone. You can just see it on Ben's face. That was not what he was suspecting. Curio's sitting back there like, hey, you got to be ready for anything. So now you've got to wonder, is the Malmar going to come up? He does choose to promote the Ultra Necrozma. I don't like that play. I would have liked to have seen one of the Malmars and just hope you hit your way into the Float Stone. Maybe he doesn't run many of them, though. And, uh, yeah, this is not looking good. The Ultra Necrozma comes down, but uh, he's not going to have a way to attack this turn. He's going to Psychic Recharge here to the Ultra Necrozma. I'm assuming both of them. But he's not going to have a way to actually uh, be able to, to get this Ultra to Krosman the active to field an attack here. Now, he can do the attack next turn. We'll mill that float stone off. But it comes down to, does Kirill have the other double puzzle or the Gootsman to be able to take one of these Malmars out and send this into game two? We see Kirill here does go to the Glissopod, so all we need here is a Guzma and a Grass Energy, and that would close this out. There is the Guzma. Ben shaking his head. He knows exactly what's about to happen. Does clap, says that's very well played right there. And uh, we are going to see that first impression for 120 damage, and Kirill with that massive comeback play on Ben. Ben chained that massive Sycamore play, and Kirill says, that's fantastic, but check this out. I've got a counter catcher. Nobody expects it. The counter catcher is fantastic when you're behind in these prize trade games. And, uh... We are going to game two right now. Kirill up 1-0 in this Zorark Glissopod versus Ultra Necrozma Malmar matchup. Whew. Wow, that was intense. I tell you what, I did that. That was a that was that was rowdy. Whew. Kirill's getting rowdy over there in that uh, in that uh, Peter Pan uh, like costume. I almost said outfit and costume is the same word. Uh, but yeah, that Peter Pan outfit. That's, uh, that's exciting. So Curio will be choosing uh, with the flip here, asking first or second. Ben says first, so Ben will get to go first in this game. Um, 
Kirio will be sending it over that way as soon as uh, Kirio chooses no or chooses to go second. Ben, maybe just slow rolling a little bit here. Ben, uh, seeing see if she can uh, get the, the temper flaring. There it is. Now it does go to Ben. All right, so we will uh, we will see here. Ben does draw into that Dawn Wings, Malmar, Lele, Guzma, and Double Psychic. So there there is a, a Lele here, though. Um, ben is screaming now. I'm not sure why Ben is screaming. Did uh did maybe they pick the wrong way? I did. It, I thought it looked like it said your turn. Maybe it did pick the wrong way. I'm not sure. Um, hmm. Hmm. I'm curious. I'm not sure why Ben's so frustrated. Maybe he's still frustrated about the last game. May okay, he is going first. Great. Maybe Ben is just on tilt a little bit from last game. You can kind of see the the frustration seeping through. It is uh, it is unfortunate. Anytime you suspect that you've got a really good board state, and then they just they completely flip flop it on you, and that nasty delinquent play. But now Ben knows that delinquent's in there. He does fist pump a little bit with that choice band draw. Does Tapu Lele grabs the bridge? It says, "All right, I can get my setup going this game. Let's get some inks, get things online." So we will see this bridge come down. I suspect two, if not three, ink will come on the board looks like he's going to grab two engage and an ultra necrozma maybe put a psychic down here on that ultra necrozma puts the choice ban maybe not i don't know do you want to make yourself susceptible to field blower he chooses no does pass the turn over to kirio so we'll see what kirio can start with starts with that same zarua has the bridge in hand never even needs to top ulele for it you would uh You'd think they ran four at this rate, but there is two Zeruas and another Wimpod with the grass coming down. Now we see Ben here draws into that Ultra Ball. Yeah, Fist Pumps. What a fantastic draw. That's going to find you another Malmar and allow you to put a Psychic in the discard. This could get your Ultra Necrozma online this turn. So we will see that Guzma and that Psychic go to the discard, grab a Malmar out, put it down on your Inke, and then N, which will reset Kirill's hand, give him plus one cards as well, but it will give Ben plus five. Now we see the float stone and the metal energy. This is exactly what you want to see. This will take a knockout this turn on this Zeru. The metal comes down. The float stone comes down. Nothing else is going to need to be played. Now you do have a psychic recharge here. I don't think there's any reason to put it on the Necrozma. You will just discard it away. You could at least put one of those energy on your Dawn Wing. So he is going to retreat it here into the Ultra Necrozma. Contemplating a Professor's Letter and a Mysterious Treasure. Looks like we will see the Mysterious Treasure on the Psychic. Grab himself a... Uh, it looks like maybe another Ultra Necrozma will come down here, at least in the hand. Will it be played? Does look like it does snap back to the hand quickly, but does put it right back there on the field. Is going to Psychic Recharge to it, get another one ready and raring to go to maybe take on this Galissapod the next turn with a Choice Band, possibly. So we will see this Photon Geyser on the Zerua, and Ben will take the prize lead 5-6. to six. High Octane Gameplay. Exactly, Titan. That's what I love to see, High Octane Gameplay. Now, we do see the promotion here by Kirio. Draws the card. Looks like there is seven cards in hand. Unipanther fan 42 has joined that Phantom Knight Nation. What a fantastic guy. And, uh, yeah, it does, does, does give the old hand nod. You know, thank you for joining the Phantom Knight Nation. And uh, Kirio is now going to, hmm, rock in a hard place. Does play that parallel down. Ben does remove the Tapu Lele. Opts to remove the Ultra Necrozma with two Psychic Energy. Man, what a bold play. You'd almost think you'd want to get rid of the Dawn Wings. But maybe Ben values it higher than that. So now the question is, will this Ultra Necrozma survive this turn? I don't really see any way that Kirio is going to be able to knock this out this turn. Um, this may be a play, just an end right now. So we do see the resources management Oranger come down. Ben keeps fist pumping just to reassure his chat and his Phantom Knight Nation that he is not concerned being down a game right now. So the end does come down. Ben draws into an altar of the moon, a mysterious treasure, a beast energy, which that beast energy will be absolutely huge this next coming turn. We're trying to take out one of these Zorark. And uh, you see the second Zorark come down now on Kirill's side. will get access to another trade. We'll have two trades a turn. That's five additional cards with the draw each turn. Now, the question will be, will the Zorark survive? That's that's the real deal. And we do see the Glissapod come down. Another countercatcher right here. So we do see that countercatcher from game one making its way back in. That Zorark is going to take the knockout on the Malmar. Goodbye. Into Fame has joined the Phantom Knight Nation. Thank you, Into Fame. And uh, so now Ben loses a Malmar and loses that Ultra Necrozma off of that Parallel City with a two Psychic Energy. You have to wonder if he's sitting here contemplating, should I have gotten rid of that? He, he can put himself in a position here where he can, uh, if he finds a Psychic, he could do, what is that, 210? Is it? Uh, 160, 180, 210. So he could do 210 here. Not a f 
terrible position, but he is going to have to find himself another Psychic Energy. He's not sure if he wants to risk it. It looks like he was just waiting on the prize draw. Kirio grabs that prize. He throws the Dawn Wings up. Finds another Ultra Ball. What are you going to grab with this? Overlays the Stadium, which will allow him to reset up his full bench, bounce that Parallel City, and hopefully put himself back into a commanding board state. Drink my water. I'm trying, dude. I'm trying. So now we do see the mysterious treasure here. It looks like he is just going to grab an EK. Value is getting another Malmar online. Understands the value of that Psychic Recharge into the late game. And does just choose to play a Sycamore here. Puts his Beast Energy in the Lost Zone. Does hit the Psychic. That's absolutely clutch. That would have been devastating if he missed it. Grabs the Psychic Recharge. You can tell the line of play is automatically in his sights. Now the question is, does he put another Inke down? He does choose to. Is going to retreat this Dawn Wings into the Ultra Necrozma and smack this Zerua for a saucy 210 damage. That will take Ben ahead 3-5 to five in prizes. Now we do know that that does put Curiel's Counter Catcher back online, which we're not sure if there is more than one of, but we do know with those puzzles of time in the deck, that Counter Catcher could be live at absolutely any time to, to take an attack on that Dawn Wings Necrozma. Now you've got to wonder if you're Curiel, what do you put up here? You can't put the Galissapod if you want the first impression damage, but uh, if you put the Zorark and you want the Guzmo, what do you do? Maybe you just promote the Oranguru here? All right, so it looks like we are going to go into the Zorark. Maybe just try to get the puzzles into the counter catcher with the DC and another bench to take out that Dawn Wings. I feel like you've got to go after the Dawn Wings here. You can't really focus on the Ultra Necrozma. The two shots is not your game. And uh, with Ben, you know, pumping out all this damage each turn, you, you can't really afford to be trading two shots for one shots. Now we do see the Ultra Ball for the Tapu Lele. Going to see that Wonder Tag ability come down and uh, grab an N is just trying to put Ben on the back foot, maybe get him dead drawing a couple turns. As we can see here, though, Ben has quite a few supporters. The end does come down. Will Kirio be able to find the double puzzles off the one trade to grab this counter catcher if they want to take the Dawn Wings Necrozma GX this turn? And we see here Ben, no problem, grabs a Choice Band, a Goose Band, a Sycamore. He's going to have plenty of options available this next turn. And we do just see the riotous beating come down. Ben nodding his head says, that's exactly what I wanted to see. I'm going to be able to set up another knockout right here on your Zorark. No problem. Invasion in is going to be able to Psychic Recharge. Rips the Psychic Energy off the top. Doesn't even have to try to find a Malmar now. Could even slow roll and say, you know, I don't I don't think I've got a supporter here. Doesn't even have to play one. And could save that Guzma for late game. Is instead going to opt to maybe take the Galissapod here. Now he did, uh... I, I, don't, I don't know if... I don't know if you want to take that Gliss spot. I think you just take the Zorark, you take the trades offline, and you really limit the draw power here of Curiel. Looks like we are going to see that the retreat into the Photon Geyser for 210 once again. Knocks out the Zorark. All the Zoraks are off the board. Now it will come down to can Curiel string together any kind of a comeback. As we saw last game, you absolutely cannot count Peter Pan out of this. Also, if there are any alerts, I will make sure to uh, to check them after the game. I don't hear them right now. So we do see the end come down. Ben putting his head in his hands. This could be absolutely where the comeback starts. The grass comes down on the Lele for the retreat. He gets the Tapu Lele off the end of one. What a clutch card. Now you've got to wonder, though, will the Parallel City come down here that could prevent Ben from playing that? It doesn't. The Oh, the first impression comes in. That will make it 3-1 to one in prizes, but Ben's got exactly what he needs to try to close this game out. He's going to be able to promote that Inke, put the Tapu Lele down, find himself a Sycamore, and a Mysterious Treasure. Unfortunately, he can't play it, so he is going to be able to find this Sycamore. Sycamore a hand away. And uh, potentially be able to grab a Malmar. Now, does he value the Cynthia to put the treasure back in the deck? I don't think you can. I think you've got to go to the Sycamore. Get the most resources you can. Try to hit one more Psychic Energy and a Malmar and close this game out as efficiently as you can. Now, he does not have a one-shot knockout here on this Galissapod. So, he may just be looking for the more long-term play. Says the treasure will be valuable to get one of these... Uh, puzzle pieces I need, but it does look like he is going to go for the maximum resource option. Is going to Sycamore that treasure away and try to find everything. Looks like there's not a lot there. There is a beast ring, though. There is a mysterious treasure. This could give him exactly what he needs to potentially try to find a knockout on this Galissapod. Unfortunately, I think he is going to be one energy short with an Ultra Necrozma. He will need three Psychic on it, and he's only going to have access to uh, two. So the question will be... Does he choose to do everything this turn, or does he wait? You know, do you choose to put the damage down and just accept that the next turn you're going to get to attack? Hmm. Hmm.
We do see him grab the alternate Crosma here. Looks like he is going to put it down. B string to it. He may just opt to say, take my Inke. I don't care. I don't, I don't care about that Inke. And, uh, you know, then just uh, Psychic Recharge over to the alternate Necrozma. It looks like he is going to invade in. Choose to uh, choose to retreat here to the alternate Necrozma. Oh, he can Sky Scorching Light. Didn't see this play coming. The Sky Scorching Light knockout on that Zerua. The sneaky, sneaky GX attack. There's that Sky Scorching Light. Most people don't even see it. That 60 damage. Knock out that Zerua on the bench. And take that cheeky knockout to go to Game 3. Glad Ben saw it there. And, uh, yeah, because I definitely didn't. And there we are. Game 3. That game, man, it looked like Ben was quite in command. So we've had two pretty good games so far. And uh, this Game 3 here is shaping up to be quite an interesting one. Ninja, nice. Uh, now we do see Ben here with his Pikachu outfit. Pikachu against Peter Pan. Oh, Azul GG just subscribed. Wow, what a guy, man. Dropping those five bones for that uh, Phantom Knight Nation subscription. What a friendly guy. And uh, there you go, Ben popping off to him saying thank you, brother, for that uh, that subscription helps the channel survive. Because if you guys didn't know, you can either subscribe or you can connect your Amazon account to your Twitch account and make it Twitch Prime. And therefore, then you get a free subscription to your favorite streamer every single month. That's exactly what he's telling him right now. You can see it. And uh, we see Ben here open up with a mulligan. Curiel already have, has the Pokemon in the active. Ben, now, mm, not what you want to see here. Two Ultra Necrozma, a Cynthia, no way to find a Tapu Lele, no way to find a Bridget. Ben might need a good top deck here. Curiel will get to start this game going first. Draws the first card, opens up that Zerua third game in a row, and passes. What just happened? There was a pass. Is, is that just an absolutely dead hand? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what just happened. You've got to wonder right now, Curiel's sitting there holding eight cards, one with a mulligan, and just drew past the turn. Was that an accident? Was the done button accidentally clicked? Ben doesn't know, but Ben's getting excited. Plays that Cynthia down, has that Inke, plays, considering the Altar of the Moon is going to pass here, so it does look like a rather slower start on both sides, but Curiel, man, you've got to wonder. Is there no supporter? Is there nothing in there? Looks for an Evo Soda right there off the top. It's going to put into a Zorark. If there is nothing in that hand, it will at least make a trade accessible try to get into a card this will tell us a lot right here we do see the trade come down what is getting traded it looks like an enhanced hammer which is pretty huge there is nothing there there could have just been a handful of items that are that were absolutely unplayable we see a Mewtwo come down so it wasn't the only bench Pokemon with a DC Ben now starting to get a little frustrated sees that Guzma come down saying oh man maybe maybe I was a little a little baited into this and we see that Psychic come down for 40 damage now that's not a lot that's not what you want to be doing that screams to me we can Ben sees it plays that altar of the moon drops the Malmar down is maybe considering the bridge it says ah it's a, it's a little slow maybe I've got time for this isn't quite sure He's still thinking. Not sure. He feels like maybe he's being baited again. Maybe there's like a parallel city up there. But uh, it looks like... He is going to play the Bridget down. So he is going to grab himself them Inkes. Maybe grab himself a Dawn Wings and a Krosma right there. Fill that bench up. This will allow him to play that Malmar next turn. And get himself into maybe a third Malmar and then Sycamore. Um, it is looking like a pass right now. And so now we're going to see if Kirio can string anything together. Does have another trade online with that card draw for the turn. So we'll get to see three new cards. Hopefully string something together. There is a Glissopod going in the discard. So you've got to assume at this point Kirio's hand is pretty weak. Maybe looking for a Bridget or a Tapu Lele. We do see the Delinquent come down. So you've, you've got to know you've got to be on the back foot here. Um, that Delinquent comes down. Is going to discard everything but the Sycamore. Give himself an out to more cards next turn. And that Parallel City does come down. So Kirio may have been slow rolling a couple of these utility cards. And is now going to say, hey, that Inke, goodbye. That Ultra Necrozma, goodbye. And you just lost a Malmar. So now you've got to start to wonder, does Kirio maybe know something we don't? Maybe playing a little slower of a first turn, letting them put a bunch of stuff down and then damaging their resources is the better route to go. Now we do see that they, uh, this Mewtwo is going to soften up the Ultra Necrozma again, putting another 40 damage down, leading to 80 damage on the... Uh, the Ultra Necrozma, 110 away from a knockout. Now Ben plays that Sycamore, grabs that Mysterious Treasure, is going to throw a Psychic away, probably grab a Malmar here, and get that unlocked. Now the question is, will you go into Dawn Wings? I suspect that you have to here. Go into Dawn Wings, double Psychic Recharge, attach your Psychic. Maybe not, says, yeah, I can't do that, I'm going to need three here. And uh, if I want to attack that Mewtwo. 
but it does does lead into you know he, he this is exactly what he's thinking here if i bring this dawn wings up take this ko on this mewtwo do i just get baited into a dc bridget another basic and and they take a knockout on me looks like he's saying you know you've you've played pretty slow this game you haven't really played an actual draw supporter yet maybe this is my line of play isn't sure if he wants to play around it and and you've got to wonder are these mind games from curiel are these is this exactly what curiel wants is been to make suboptimal plays trying to play around things that don't exist looks like the metal is going to come down on the ultra necrozma it's just going to opt to do the 100 damage not play anything here i do think that that's quite an interesting decision um giving Kirill that extra turn to get going. You know, if Kirill did have everything they needed to knock out that Dawnwings, that's the correct play. But if Kirill was sitting back, this is just another three cards Kirill's going to get to see to actually figure out and maybe piece together a comeback. So there is an Acer roll that makes you start to wonder. There was not a lot there. Looks like a lot of maybe supporters that didn't do much. A Zerua comes down. Ben's starting to realize, I think I maybe made a misplay because that Bridget did come right there off that trade. Now we see another Zerua and two Wimpods. The DC's coming down. The Mewtwo's going to retreat. And we're gonna see that knockout on this Ultra Necrozma, and Ben may have just misplayed himself into a hole here. Looks like Kirill's gonna go down to four prizes, and Ben is sitting there wondering, "Uh oh, what do I do?" That's two Ultra Necrozma in the discard, and my Dawn Wings is weak to this Zorg. Now, now Ben is not out of this. Ben has a chance. What he needs to do here is find his way into a choice band, and he can actually knock this Zorg back out. And. uh a, a, with the with the GX attack, the Moon Eclipse GX attack, and actually two 210 damage to Zara can take it off the board and protect himself the next turn. He chooses not to play the Psychic. I uh, that may have been the right play now that he doesn't actually have access to the um to to the uh, to the 210 damage. However, however, bringing up this Ultra to Crossman now is incredibly risky. He's going to bring this up and take it into the active he can still use the moon eclipse but it won't take the knockout and you've got to wonder does Kirill have the G or the uh the guzma to play around this to to maybe take a malmar off the board the resistance here will make it only do 160 so actually the moon eclipse would not have done enough he the choice band wasn't even out he would have needed the beast energy actually with the choice band and uh forgot about that resistance there on the uh the old zorark looks like now glissopod is coming down with an evo soda uh, for that other Zark, so now we're into two trade mode. That's five additional cards every turn, and this is starting to look rocky for Ben. You've got to wonder what can he piece together. He is still stuck under that parallel lock. We do see he has the field blower, but not a lot to really play it with. And you know, you don't want a field blower until you're going to be able to be proactive with it, because there very well could just be another parallel city that comes down. So we do see the the multiple trades coming out of Kirill here, pretty much drawing the whole deck, getting rid of resources like Bridget that you don't want. Another Evo Soda coming down, which could lead into Zark number three. And uh, this is starting to look really rocky. We're going to see Kirill draw into pretty much everything, going down now to 23 cards in deck and going back up to eight cards in hand. You've got to start to wonder what what's going to happen here we see a retreat we see the dc come down on the mewtwo this is going to be able to do quite a lot of damage it looks like it should do not much actually because of the fact that you cannot hit into that necrozma under any circumstance thinking maybe it's zygarde gx where you can actually attack if you're not ex or gx but you cannot do any damage to that necrozma now i'm not sure if maybe that's just a bait maybe saying uh making ben think that that was a misplay we have seen kirio play a couple mind games so far in this matchup and this series You've got to wonder, though, is that DC really worth a mind game there? It uh, it could have just been an actual mistake. We're not quite sure. Now, we do see the end coming down out of Ben. Says, you know, I'm going to need to get myself into some other resources. Grabs a float stone. Not, a, not too terrible of a draw here. And another psychic energy, which uh, with the Ultra Ball will be able to be put in the discard. Get two on that and uh, potentially take a knockout. But you could just Dark Flash as well. I don't think Ben wants to keep this Necrozma in range, though, being potentially knocked out. The beautiful thing here that Kirill's doing is by if Ben takes the knockout on this Mewtwo, he is making it so another GX will actually put Ben ahead in prizes and turn that counter catcher back online. So uh, it is incredibly risky. Is going to maybe set up for. It, it looks like he's maybe choosing. Uh... He's choosing two Pokemon. He, he knocks out the Mewtwo with the weakness and chooses to put 20 on the Zorark. That's an interesting place, putting the 20 there. I, uh, I would have liked to have seen it come down on one of the other Zorarks to maybe account for the resistance on that Dawn Wings in case you needed the Choice Band. Uh, well, he already Moon Eclipse, though. So, actually, I'm not sure the 20 damage is even relevant anymore. Um, 
we do see another trade come out here and it is of a cynthia which makes me think that there is another supporter already in hand for curiel and they're going to look to play a guzma this turn and maybe solidify a knockout on that dawn wings I would like to see more aggression towards the Dawn Wings, uh, allow Ben not to continue to rush in, uh, to invade and retreat into this Ultra Necrozma to keep resetting the energy each turn. Looks like there is a max potion on that Zorark that is going to wipe 180 damage off the board, and that's two separate attacks that Ben put down to actually make that happen. That's such a clutch play there. You can see Ben with the frustration. That's two prizes just wiped off the board right away for Ben. What a huge play. Commentating again. Yes, dapper we are. Absolutely, my friend. And uh, you've got to wonder now, if you're Ben, what do I do? What do I do? I've uh, I, I've pretty much got to get this Ultra Necrozma online. Now, Ben isn't in a terrible spot. However, he does still need three GX prizes if he is going to take this game, unless he's going to manage to take a knockout on something like a Wimpod. Now, we see the Tapu Lele come down for a Guzma. You can see Ben's confused. What would you want a Guzma here? Looks like the Guzma's going to come down maybe on that Dawn Wings or a Malmar. And we do have the Dawn Wings come up, so it does look like Zorak in hand has another DC, Ben shaking his head, and the Parallel City comes down. What an absolute rock right there. That is absolutely going to rock, and it has to send the Hoopa to the discard. Isn't going to have a fantastic way to retreat. He can promote the Malmar. Does the 240, knocks out the Necrozma, goes down to two prizes. The Malmar will come into the active now. Now, what that's going to lead to is a float stone from Ben. We'll be able to double recharge, take a knockout on this Zorark. So he's not in a terrible spot, but you do have to wonder... What's he got after that? You know, he's going to have to retreat this Necrozma then, or Guzma, to be able to actually reset this up. And he will have another KO next turn with a Guzma, if he can keep it in hand. But you've got to wonder, Kirill's played this pretty flawlessly with regards to the resources side. No ends in the discard, which means, is Kirill going to be able to uh, string an end next turn and really put Ben in the hot seat with only three cards in hand and only one bench spot to work with with regards to getting a Tapu Lele to get out of it? This is such a close one. You've, you've, you've got to be nervous. You've got to be nervous for Ben here. You could tell he's, he's strenuously thinking his, his plays through, not just for this turn, but next. You know, you know he's got to expect the end, right? You haven't seen an end yet. You are, uh... I hear something. I hear, like, typing. But, uh, you, you've got to expect a, a you know, a, an end here. Your, your opponent ha hasn't played any. They've got three trades online. They're going to get the draw a card. That's seven cards. They've got another six in hand. That's 13. That's going to be more cards than what's left in the deck after the three trades. They, I, I just, it's highly unlikely. And if Ben takes the sock out here, he, he does open up another bench spot. Can you bench the Stone Wings? I absolutely don't think you can. I think this would be a huge misplay if Ben benches the Stone Wings. I know what he's thinking here. It's going to allow me to continue the invasion even through an end. But if you were to bench the Stone Wings, you set yourself up for a, uh, a quick Guzma Riot is beating knockout. And he is going to choose not to play it. Does take the Photon Geyser knockout, send himself down to three. But he is at minimum two turns away from taking this because there's no way even with his Sky uh, sky Scorching Light GX attack to take three prizes next turn. So he's going to need at minimum two turns. Now we do see this Field Blower come down, possibly removing this Float Stone. You can see the frustration there from Ben because now he, he, he needs the Guzma. And the Zerua comes down, the DC on the Zorark, the energy on the Glitzapod, and there's that end that we were talking about, the absolutely crippling end. You don't even care if you're Kirill if you're at two here, because you're just going to draw him right back with the double trade. Ben now does hit a Mysterious Treasure, a Metal Energy, and a Psychic. He can try to set up a Tapu Lele to get himself into this Guzma, um, but he's going to need to find a Float Stone. He's going to have to rip a Float Stone off the top of the deck to be able to pull this off. And you wonder, does he have any left? We also know he runs the Altar of the Moon, um, which could allow him a way to set up a free retreat, but I don't I don't think he's going to be able to to pull this off. Even even if he grabs the Guzma off the treasure, what, what does he do? And now he's sitting in a situation where this Ultra Necrozma has 130 damage on it and is simply one Guzma away from a knockout against a deck that hasn't played any of the four Puzzle of Time to get one back. Oh, you've got to worry for Ben here. What can he string together? He, he's got He's going to look like Professor's Letter for at least one Psychic Energy here. Um, mysterious treasure, maybe the psychic away. Oh boy, my cat clawing the 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 door. Um, not quite sure what that's about, but uh, no, this is the winners bracket, Ninja Squirtle round two winners bracket. Um, this is game three. 
you could tell Ben here, I think realizing most of his options are out of reach because for him to get this uh, Photon Geyser off this turn, he is not only going to need a Float Stone or an Altar of the Moon, both of which are in the deck, but he's also going to need a Guzma to do it, and he's not going to be able to find the Stadium or the Item card without being able to play a Draw Supporter to get it. Uh, it also looks like that Tapu Lele is in there. The question is, do you just play the end and, and retreat out your, your Altar Necrozma and try to, you know, see another day? But that's only going to put him at three cards and not give him a lot of options. So it looks like he is going to grab the Tapu Lele here and uh, probably has to grab that end, I would suspect. I don't think you've got many other options. You can, however, um, Psychic Recharge to your Tapu Lele, send that up as an attacker. Um, he Now, we do know he does not have access to a GX attack here, so he cannot Tapu here. He is going to... It looks like he is just going to go for the Guzma, maybe try to stick a Zorark in the active. I'm not sure that's going to work because it still leaves Kirio with the exact same out, a uh, a Guzma for game. And so he is looking through, says, I can't grab that one. It's got a float stone on it. I can't leave the Galissapod here. You, there's a, there's a, there's a hair. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, uh, I think we're winding down on this one. This is looking to be bad. He is, uh, he is just going to load up this Lele, try to send it in there, make some magic happen if he can. And, uh, you know, we're going to see Kirill now with three cards in hand, two trades online, and a draw, be able to try to get into a, uh, a, a Guzma and a double colorless energy. Or actually, just at this point, a Guzma will close it out because with this Gu with Ben's own Guzma, it's going to allow Glissopod to go back to the bench, which will turn first impression back on if it can come active. So Ben contemplating, what do I grab here? Maybe I just grab the Wimpod with the highest retreat cost. Um, but at this point, I, if you're Kirill, you've just got to be thinking Guzma, Guzma, Guzma. And so with three cards in hand, two trades online, and a draw, we're going to see at minimum eight cards this turn from Kirill to try to find exactly what is needed. Now, we do see the knockout on that Zerua. That will allow Ben to go down to two prizes. So this is not over. If Kirill cannot find the Guzma here, Ben could maybe rip a top deck that could put him right back in this game. You've got to wonder, though. There's the Tapu Lele. Will that lead to the Guzma? You can see Ben with his hands and his hairs. Is the Guzma in the deck? There's only 12 cards left. He's shaking his head. I think he knows the writing is on the wall. Kirill's looking. Maybe the Guzma's not in there. Looks like a Sycamore is grabbed. There's no Guzma. You can tell. Ben's excited. There's no Guzma. But is this just the Sycamore for the puzzle of time? Now, we are going to see seven cards come out, and there's still the double trade left. There is one puzzle that's gone, so we do see the double trade left. Kirill's going to be able to draw the whole freaking deck right here. That is absolutely insane. Will the double puzzle come out? Ben is on the ropes. He's not sure yet, but the double puzzle, there should be two left. There's a field blower. Kirill has no cards in deck right now. If if the double puzzle's not here with the Guzma, Kirill's actually going to deck out of this game. We see puzzle one. Is the second puzzle there? It looks like it is promoting the option for the double puzzle, which will lead it to the Guzma out of the discard. I believe there is one in there, unless they're uh, they're in the prizes. Looks like grabs a puzzle with a DCE. Maybe. Oh, looks like is just going to have the crossing cut GX attack with that DCE off the Galissapod to knock out the Tapu Lele. <sighs> wow. What a game. Curiel running through the full deck to pull that one off with the final puzzles to knock out Ben right there at the end. A fantastic 2-1 victory. What a match. Congratulations to Curiel moving on in that winner's bracket. And congratulations to Ben as well. What a great game played, even in some of those rocky situations, to, to make comebacks and and everything and i have no doubt we'll do fantastic going into the the losers bracket round two now you've uh 